Hello and welcome to Glasgow Rangers Nation with me, your host, Aaron, the channel that brings you your team every single day. Guys, before we get on to talk about, obviously, about the Rangers men's team, we've got Philippe Clement, about the director of football, about the transfer business that could be done in 43 days' time. That's right, about 42 days' time, actually. Sorry, 42 days' time. Then we will obviously want to talk about something else first. I want to say massive Massive congratulations to the Rangers women's team who today beat Glasgow City 2-0. Glasgow City uh, were obviously the challengers at the top um, champions last season, I think it was. The, anyway, Rangers women with goals from Rio Hardy today won the game 2-0. As you can see from the league table, that puts them top of the league uh, with Celtic in second place. That's the way it should be. Rangers on top, Celtic second, always the way that it should be. Hopefully, the men's league will start to look very much the same um, very soon. But, you know, massive, massive congratulations to Joe Potter and the girls. Absolutely phenomenal. Yet again, another brilliant performance by the Rangers ladies today. Just brilliant. I just want to say a massive congratulations and fantastic. Well done, well done, ladies. You were amazing and you represented our club superbly. You you show everything it is to be a Ranger. So well done. Congratulations on going top of the league and well done on your fantastic victory over Glasgow City today. Brilliant girls. Well done. So I want to start with that, guys. That was some, a bit of positive news, a bit of, a bit of kind of real football, isn't it? You know, um, I know I got a bit of criticism earlier in the week for saying that I didn't like international football and it was boring, but I'm, I'm sorry, it is. It's bloody boring. It's absolutely god awful boring. And I haven't watched an international game in years, and I don't intend to start now. It's not Rangers. I don't want to know. I'm not interested. Don't care. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about Rangers as they are at this moment in time. So it has been a weird week, kind of thing. You know, the fact that obviously there's been no football and it's all been sort of talking about, you know, a little bits about injury and a little bits about Clement and little bits about this player and that player. And obviously the big news yesterday were about Dimitri de Conda that, uh, you know, there's been nothing again today. That's So it's been kind of left as it is. So we'll obviously have to wait to see if that story is very much true. But I, I certainly hope that it is. There is some legs in this story, you know. Yeah, I'd love, of course, I'd love to see someone like Sam Jewell as, as the director of football, you know, given his track record at Brighton. But I think, you know, given the financial compensation package you'd have to put in place to get him out of Brighton and obviously the, you know, to pull him away from English Premier League. And look, I, look, I love Rangers as much as the next fan, but, you know, the English Premier League is the biggest league in the world. And if you're working in there and you're working at a team that are, you know, competing for top 10, they're competing in Europe every year, which I know we are, you know, it, it is hard to get you away from that job. And that's the way that's the situation as it is. Dom, uh, Dimitri de Conda seems like a good candidate, and I'm, you know, his his links to Clermont certainly will help that. And his his ability to use the trading model, which is something that Rangers want to use, obviously is very promising. And I think the sooner or later, the sooner that we get in place a director of football, the better, because we're heading towards January. It's 42 days to go until January the first. 42 days until the January transfer window opens. And look, I know most people in my family and most people around uh, around uh, you know Britain now are doing the whole. There's a, dog say that's mr shadow uh, most of the people around britain are counting down to christmas it's all this sleep still santa isn't it but for me it sleeps it's days to the january transfer window that's when my christmas comes that's when i see what presents we're going to get for rangers and look it is a it's going to be a critical period do i think we'll do business i think well we'll have to i think there is a need to do business if Clemon's uh, recipe for success, which we're going to talk about shortly in the video, is going to work, then I think we do need to bring some players in in January. But I think it's very much about as a fan base and as a club kind of accepting that there are priorities for January and then there are priorities for the summer. And, you know, there are certain decisions that need to be made by January. There are certain decisions that need to be made before, by the summer. And I think it's about prioritising those decisions now. And I think that's where the director of football needs to come in to aid Philippe Clermont in making those decisions, in helping him to take some of that work off his plate. You know, he has got a hard enough job as it is to keep the team obviously motivated, to keep the team moving forward, to keep it making the progress. He has a lot of things he needs to put right. He said that, you know, he's got to work on fitness. He's working on the tactics. He's working on the, the, the type of play, the interchanging positions, the fluidity of the football. And that's all going to take time. And that's training ground work. He doesn't need to be getting bogged down with contract negotiations, transfer negotiations, scouting, et cetera, et cetera. So 
that's where the director of football comes into that appointment i think is absolutely vital if we're going to be successful in january now for me and there is i think two key priorities in january i don't think january is a great time to go and splash the cash i don't think it's time to go and sign four five six players i think that is it's the wrong time to do that you know you can set negotiate with bosman's for the summer for them to come in for free um, and if you're willing to pay a little bit of catch up front, you may get some of those guys who've only got a few months left on their contract if you want them at this point. But look at it this way. I think for us, there is a couple of priorities we need to address going into this transfer window and coming out of this transfer window. For me, the first priority is a winger. We need wingers. We haven't got a lot of natural width in this team. Seema is, can play there. Don't get me wrong. Seema has done a brilliant job there. He's been one of our best players this season. His goal return is excellent. His assists return is excellent. Abdallah Seema has been one of the success stories. And obviously the frustrating thing uh, with Abdallah Seema is that he's not our player. And that obviously come at the end of the season, he will be you know, on his way back to Brighton. And... You know the, the fact that we've got to try and sign that we may you know try and sign him you know we could actually lose out on him because you know he's getting back towards form or the other or clubs are going to come sniffing around him and can we really afford the price that brighton are going to ask for him it is going to be a substantial amount of money when I mean, you look at seema's record this year 12 games in the premiership five goals one assist in the europa league four games two bump four matches two goals scottish league cup three matches one goal uh, Champions League three matches one goal so you know this season he has scored eight nine goals um in 16 19 in 22 games he's you know he's, he's which for a player who's not an out and out striker is pretty decent so he's done well but he's not really his natural position Abi Matondo obviously is an out and out winger but he's been out injured he again is someone who I think will come back and hopefully when the Philippe Clement will continue to thrive to succeed and to grow and develop Scott Wright's done a great job um, in, 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 in when he's been asked to and when he's been asked to step up to the plate by Philippe Clermont. He's, you know, a player that's kind of on a redemption arc, a player that's kind of had a rebirth, a reborn, been reborn under Philippe Clermont. You know, someone who we tried to sell twice in the summer. We put on a pint of turkey twice, but he came back twice, didn't he? So there's, you know, but I do think there is a need to go and get a natural winger to get somebody who can play out wide. Um, I don't want Ryan Kent back. I really don't think he's the answer. I think, you know, he showed when he downed tools last season that his attitude's not right. There's always a danger of that with Kent. So I don't think he's the answer. You know, you I know what you'll all say to me. So who is the answer? Look, I don't know. I haven't got a massive... I haven't done a great deal of scouting into it, looking into it. I will do. I'll start looking into it. But I haven't got a scouting network like Rangers. I haven't got a chief scout. I haven't got data analysis guys i haven't got ai analysis guys i haven't got all those things that rangers have got i haven't got a massive scouting network that goes and watches games i haven't got time to sit and watch games from all over the world like they have so look i don't know but a priority for me is a winger um for definitely i also think we need a center back i think we missed out on getting one in the summer someone to play alongside connor goldson a real for me no nonsense in your face left-sided center back Ben Davis is you know, all right this season. John Suter is not a left-sided centre-back. Balogun's done a good job, but he isn't getting any younger. Um, so I think we really do need a dominant, no-nonsense, Goff, Butcher-esque. Yes, I know we're not going to get one as good as them because they cost 60, 70, 80 million now. But someone of that type, you know, a no-nonsense, in-your-face, physical leader at the back to play alongside Connor Goldson. I think that is something else we do need to address in January. Now, I know what you're saying. There are other priorities. Yes, left back, striker. But I think that is something we can wait till the summer for. You know, Danilo is, is, is starting to prove himself. To some degree, Dessas is even starting to score goals. Yes, he's still not great. Roof is there still. You know, you've got uh, Zach Lovelace to return as well, who who's, who's done, who did fantastic in his debt on his debut. So I think there's enough options there. Left back, we've got Bourne and Ridvan. I think until one of those is moved out or one of them leaves or both leave, you're not going to go and get a left back at this stage. It's not a top priority. Um, you know, you've got to prioritise in January what you need and just go for what you need because it, it is a bad window to buy a lot of players. So I think it is about moving those priorities in terms of this is January's priorities. This is the summer's priorities. Yes, there are obviously contract negotiations as well to look at. John Lundstrom's contract, uh, Kamar Roof's contract, and obviously Borna Barisic's contract. All three are out of, the season, out of contract at the end of the season. And, and for me, a decision needs to be taken in January. And that decision is, are we offering them a new contract? Yes or no. If we're not, then we need to move them on in January. We cannot allow them to move on, to be allowed to be leaving for free if Barisic was to leave, yes, then left-back does become more of a priority for the um, January transfer window. But if he doesn't, it isn't. 
you know, it very much depends on players going out before players come in in certain positions. I don't think you can really run with three left backs in your squad, but decisions do need to be taken about Roof, Lundstrom and Barisic before the end of the season. We do not want a situation like we had with Alfie, like we had with Ryan Kent, with Scotty. You know, these guys leaving and walking for nothing, you know, several hundred, several tens of millions of pounds of talent just walking out the door. Um, you know, it's not what you want. And, it's, and, and as a football club, you cannot run your business that way. You cannot allow your best talent to just leave and to move on. It, it, it is counterproductive. It leads to bad financial results. It, allows, it leads to people not having money to reinvest in the squad. And after all, that's what the trading model is all about. Yes, you aren't going to get top dollar for Lundstrom or top dollar for Barisic or top dollar for Carmar Roof. Roof for the injury, reason that he's always injured. Barisic for the reason that he's not that good. Lundstrom for the reason again that he's 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 inconsistent. Mm. You know, Lundstrom is playing really well at the moment. But have you ever considered it's because he wants a contract? Uh, you know, it could be that situation. So look, they're, they're all decisions we need to make before the end of this season, and, and it's a huge, huge thing. It's something that Billy Clement cannot be left to do by himself, and that's why we need that director of football in place sooner rather than later. Mm. Now, obviously, Philippe Clement has done a fabulous job since he took over from Michael Beale. You know, Michael Beale had left this team in a pretty sorry state and had left this team in a bad way with a lot of very average players. Philippe, well, appearingly average players. Philippe Clement is on a mission to turn these guys around, and he has a clear recipe for success. You know, he believes in the high press. He believes in fluidity of position. He believes in interchanging of position, interchanging points of attack, different types of attack, wide in the channels in short out long he has a different way of playing you know he has a tactical brain he obviously is someone who clearly knows what he needs to do to win games you know he studies the opposition he understands that one size does not fit all when it comes to actually beating teams out there you have to take a variety of approaches to beat teams the approach that works against Kilmarnock is not the same approach that will work against Celtic, which is not the same approach that will work against, say, uh, Liverpool in, in the um, if, if we were to draw them in the Europa League. There are different ways of playing every team. And I think that is something that he understands and he demands that of his players. He knows that fitness is an issue and that is something that he is clearly addressing. I talked on a video earlier this earlier last week about the fact that he'd set in place uh, personal fitness targets for players and he was working on those with players to develop their personal fitness because he doesn't believe the fitness is good enough and I think we've seen the difference in the fitness of a number of players over the last few weeks and the steps forward they've made in terms of their own personal fitness which has benefited the team now Clemon, I think you know one thing that he is missing and this was something that um that Kenny Miller was talking about the other day is he, he wants a goal scoring midfielder someone who can run beyond the strikers you know that doesn't necessarily have to be the 10. It could be the eight. Now, obviously, Raskin is one possibility. Tom Lawrence is another strong possibility for this role. Now, it is a po is it a chop opportunity in a 4-2-3-1? Now, Clemens 4-2-3-1s historically have always had two in front of the back four. And the two in the front of the back four have done very different jobs for him. The two in front of the back four, one has sat and one has gone. And one has been the runner that gets beyond the, the front line and it gets into the box and breaks and goes box to box. Now, obviously, the player that we were led to believe was that type of player was Jose Cifuentes. We're obviously yet to see that from Jose Cifuentes, and it does remain to be seen whether or not Philippe Clement working with Jose can get him to play in that way. And it could still happen. Of course, it could still happen. You know, I think the, the one issue we do have with Cifuentes is I think there is, could be some fatigue there. The guy has been playing football pretty much solidly all year, has had no time off. So that obviously, I think, is going to be something that, that could be an issue with him. I think fatigue. Um, but, you know, he is a player that certainly can be turned around. Now, could it be that we move Tom Lawrence a bit further back and Lawrence becomes that player who runs from the back, goes box to box? You know, is that a possibility that we, you know, we go in with a with a lineup with obviously a back four of Tav Goldson uh, for the moment, Balogun and say Ridvan with then Lawrence and Lundstrom or Lawrence and Jack or Lawrence and Raskin sitting in front of the back four uh, with then your attacking three of Matondo when fit, Clank, Cantwell and Seema with Danilo up front. Is that something we look at? And, you know, could Lawrence fulfil that role? I would strongly suggest he can. He's a very intelligent footballer. He's a very good player. You know, he has the ability to know when to go, when to stay, when to tackle, when to not tackle. The only issue is, are you diminishing some of that attacking ability? You know, is he better suited to being in the 10 role? But then you've got the question over where does Cantwell fit into the team? But it's nice to have options like that. It's nice to have that selection headache. 
Um, you know, we saw in that game against um, the end, you know, before the international break, um, um, against Livingston, that pass that he played through for Dessers was absolutely beautiful and, and absolutely perfect. You know, which Dessers then goes to scuff into the back of the net. You know, that was fantastic. And he showed in flashes there. He, for me, was the man of the match in that game. And he showed real class in that game. You know, he could possibly be the answer as that eight. You know, it's about adapting and for the moment, you know, taking what you've got and working with it. And I think Philippe Clement, as a manager, seems to be the type of manager that is not one of these that comes in and says, you know, wait till I get my players, which, you know, was very much the Michael Beale approach last season, wasn't it? It was very much a, well, I'm just managing this through to the end of the season until I can get my squad in place and et cetera, et cetera. Well, when you didn't, Michael, you were awful. Uh, Philippe Clermont seems to be a man who can work with any players, can develop an understanding with with any players, can, can get any players playing. And I think, you know, there is, I think, uh, a kind of I don't know, desire within Clement to adapt what he's got for the moment and use what he's got for the moment to get the very best out of them. Now, Lawrence, like I said, could be the answer is that eight. So, you know, it's a possibility. You make well, that's not going to work even with diminishing Lawrence's abilities. It's just a thought, you know, in terms of getting that box to box midfielder. It may be Jose Cifuentes in time can do that, or Nicholas Raskin when fit can do that. But we've obviously got to wait and see on that front. But one thing that is encouraging, one thing that has kind of given me an optimism moving forward towards the end of this season is the fact that Philippe Clement is quite clearly someone who has that vision. He has that desire to do well. He clearly has that recipe to succeed as a manager and have a, has a clear vision of how to get past teams and to beat teams. And that is a massive positive. Is the league over? God, no, it's not. You know, is there is there a situation where we could still win a domestic treble? Treble, of course there is. Despite what that lot across the city may say, despite what their what their brain dead moronic fans might say, you know, Celtic fans are absolute morons. They are absolute morons. Of course they are. They they, they know nothing about anything, and and, and they're going to come on and insist otherwise. But look, we know what we've got in Clermont. We know what we've got in this team, and we know that with the right motivation, the right coaching, and the right ability, we can beat anyone on our day. And that's something we've got to take forward towards the end of this season. Well, guys, let me know what you think of what I've spoken about this morning, this afternoon or this evening, depending on when you've picked up the video. Thank you for watching. If you can hit that sub, that'd be absolutely phenomenal to help the channel keep on growing. Guys, we had a good day yesterday, so thank you for all your subs yesterday. On the way out, guys, as always, two things for me. Number one, to smash the like is always beneficial for the channel. And number two, please remember, we're all, we are always going to be, we are the people.